It's Wednesday, which means it's time to go to the phone lines and hear from Wyatt Pelicano of the Shepherd University Rams. Wyatt, how are you doing today, man? Man, I am absolutely uh, energized and just ready to roll. It's playoff week in Shepherdstown. Uh, what more could you want? Uh, just the playoff football is the best kind of football. Uh, so it's do or die time now. Uh, there, there's not much more to say. You know, the energy is immaculate. It's contagious. Uh, I think everybody's feeling it. Everybody's excited. So what, what, more, what more is there to say? Wyatt, let's get into last week's game first and foremost before we get into the playoff situation for you guys. You guys end the regular season at home, Senior Day, Military Appreciation Day, with a big win over Mercy Hirsch. Just talk a little bit about that game. Yeah, uh, I think it was it was a lot of fun. It was good. It was a team win. Um, you know, we, we played a good, uh, a good football game. Uh, particularly offensively, we had a very good day, which is always nice, you know, for me. I'm an offensive guy, so that's where I look first. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a convincing offensive performance for us. Uh, we got it done on the other sides, too. We we were we did what we needed to do and got out of there. You know, we ended the season, the regular season, 9-2, which, uh, which is a good – it's not perfect. You know, it's not what we wanted, but it is a good year. Uh, and you gotta you got to celebrate the wins when you get them. And ending a season in that way – or a regular season in that way, uh, that's something that's definitely worth celebrating. So we're, we're, we're happy with that. Um, we know we can be better uh, in years to come as far as regular season records go, and we know that we have been better before. Uh, but we're, we're trying to do everything we can to focus on the task at hand now. Um, but, yeah, they, they, were, they were a good team for sure, and it was a, it was a good win. And in that win, it was kind of a close game at the half, more of a shootout in the first half. In the second half, though, the offense stayed consistent. The defense stepped up. Going into that locker room, can you share with us maybe what was said or what kind of changed that mindset going out in the second half to be a little bit more dominant? Um, I mean, like you guys said, you know, the, the offensive side of it was there uh, all day, um, which is always a good thing, you know. You never, you're never going to be upset about about being hot or being productive. So uh, we made the adjustments that we felt we needed to offensively, uh, defensively. I, I know that they. Uh, it, I don't know if I want to say it was a, a, any sort of wake up call or anything, but the the coaches were in there definitely getting trying to motivate and get them to 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 do what they needed to do, and they came out in the second half and did just that. So. Uh, I think that that was they did they did what they needed to do to turn it around and give us the edge that we needed to win the game and the offense uh, performed in a very convincing fashion like a well oiled machine all day which is always a good thing and our special teams held up there and and I don't believe we had to punt the ball once so I we had to apologize to my man Ryan Derrick after the game but uh, that that's always a good thing for us as an offense too. And then for the line in particular, another week with no sacks allowed. Uh, I believe that is the third straight week for you guys. Uh, do you feel like um, up front that line as a whole playing the best football right now for this team? Um, I wouldn't say that we're playing the best. Uh, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, like it's hard to compare, like which which position group is doing what, and and you can sit back and try to do that and figure out where who's being the most productive and, and maybe who's being the least. Um, and we're, we're definitely happy with the results we're getting. Um, as of late, you know, no sacks through three games is, is a, is a, it's an impressive feat. Uh, and again, like I said before, you got to celebrate the wins when you get them, and that is most definitely a win. Uh, so we are happy with it. But again, the job's not finished. You know, we're, we're heading into what we consider a, a totally different season now, which is playoff football. It's a new beast. Um, it's a different brand of football. We're probably going to see some more heat, some more pressures uh, as the games get more tense and tight. So uh, we got to be ready to play and continue and, and try to uh, continue that streak of no sacks. It's going to be a challenge, but it's it's definitely doable. So, uh, But as far as which position group, like if we're the best or worst, we, I mean, it's one team. You know, it, it, we if we don't do our end, nothing gets done, but that goes across the board for all of those guys. So, uh, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put us above or below anybody else on the. I, I wasn't really. I guess asking that. I meant maybe kind of judging amongst yourselves. Do you guys feel like at this point in the year, you guys are playing your best football as an offensive line? 
Oh, Not really yeah, comparing it to the sorry, other position yeah, yeah, group. I, sorry. I, I did, yeah, it, it, it's all good. Um, I think so. But, again, it's it's to me the only uh, stack column that matters is the win and loss one. Um, the rest of it is you got to learn from it and, and take the information to, to improve yourself as a player and as a unit in the offensive line case. Um, on the stack column, it looks like we're definitely playing the best football we've played this year so far. So I, I guess that that would probably be the truth. But, but again, you know, offensive line stats are are very tricky to, to understand, and, and sometimes they're not truthful in what they're representing because if you have a quarterback who's just getting the ball out, then you'll have zero sacks. And at the same time, if you have a quarterback who sits back there all day for 10 seconds, even with good protection, that offensive line, the stack column for the sacks is going to show something different. So it's hard to say. I think that we're doing a good job. We're executing at a high level right now. But we, we know that we still have room to improve and that we're going to need to improve to make the playoff run that we plan to make. Well, you guys are – you mentioned playoffs, and you guys end up in Super Region 2. Um, so a different road – for this team this year, um, I guess what's your your thoughts on moving regions first of all, and uh, anything different about that? I mean, obviously, obviously your goals are still the same, but it's definitely kind of a uh, different situation considering you expect to be in Super Region One every year, and then they kind of flip things up on you. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's very interesting. Um, to be honest, I don't I don't fully understand uh, the reasoning behind it. I've heard some different stories. I've heard that it's to help with travel. I've heard all every story that there is to hear. You know, I've I've even heard that there was stuff with people wanted to people in the committee not wanted us to play certain people in the region and, and this that the third. To me, I feel like it, it, they're sending us there to lose. Um, I feel like that it's it's a it's a situation where. We just they didn't they're tired of seeing us win. That's how I'm taking it and viewing it. Uh, so they're they're trying to give us a tougher road. Uh, but honestly, I don't think it's going to deter anything. You know, we still are we still have to play the game. You know, and, and it doesn't matter what they what they put in front of us. We still hold all the cards and are and are going to have to go out there and we control our own destiny with how we play. So that that's really the important part. Um, it's just another another obstacle in the road that they're throwing at us. We just got to take it and take the rest of them as they come and uh, continue to move forward and, and try to be a better team for it. Um, it definitely provides some challenges for us with travel and everything like that. And obviously it's a lot of unfamiliar opponents compared to our region where we know a lot of the competition. So there's a whole lot that goes into it. But, but again, just like how these opponents are all going to be foreign to us, we are going to be extremely foreign to them. So it, it goes both ways. Um, so we're not going to sit around and complain about it. We're, we're, we're picking up our tail and blue collar and clocking into work regardless, and we're going to go in there and do everything that we need to do this week to try to get the job done and, and progress our goals, like you said, because the goals have not changed regardless of the region. How much is it like kind of interesting to, I guess, embrace those new challenges that you mentioned there? Because, um, like you said, it's a new region, and you guys have already won back-to-back Region 1 championships, so kind of a, a new challenge in a lot of ways to try to see if you can take on Region 2 and, and win that. Oh, trust me, I've already thought about it that way. You know, I'm, I'm a big uh, combat sports guy like USC and boxing, and uh, I was saying to, to Malachi and a bunch of the other dudes on the team that, I mean, this is really like our chance to go and get a, a different belt in a different weight class. You know, they're giving us an opportunity to, to play against dudes that we're not familiar with. But uh, like you guys said, you know, I'm, I'm staring right now at I got two Region 1 rings already. So if I can find a way to get a Region 2 one, that would just, I think, increase the resume for all of us and for the program. And that's really what it's all about. So uh, it, it is a new opportunity. And, again, if we, if we went out in this region, it could very well uh, improve our seeding situation in the Final Four. So that's, that's the goal. Um, there's obviously ups and downs to every situation, and those, that is the silver lining of the, of the uh, situation that we are currently in. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, you can look at it in a bad way or you can look at it in a good one. Um, I tend to choose the good way to look at things. So, yeah, that, that's really I, – I see it as a, as a new set of opportunities and goals for us to do something different this year um, and then have something different to show for it. What have you seen from Lenore Ryan so far, Wyatt? 
Uh, they're a very uh, they're a very talented defense. Um, I haven't even really looked at their offense at all, and I don't know that I will because I again play off football like typically on a regular week. Um, I feel comfortable enough that I can I can maybe take some of the time I would spend watching uh, their defense to watch some of their offense and then get a feel for the whole game. But that's kind of a piece of the game that's out of my control. And uh, playoff football, I'm really only focused on the things that are that are in the offensive line's power to control. So uh, they're they're a very talented defense. They got some dudes, some athletes that can fly around in the in the secondary. Um, and their box is no joke. So it's definitely going to be one of the best defenses we've seen, and we we have to prepare as such. Why it doesn't take much to kind of kick your mindset into another gear knowing it's playoff football it's win and survive lose and the season's over um i mean if it if it does and i think that you're in the wrong place you know i think uh everybody knew like you can you could tell just by like on the practice field yesterday it's a different energy you know because any practice really at this point like this is our wednesdays are typically our last working day of the week in pads and doing the stuff that we need to do to to get better physically, um, so this could potential this has the potential to be our last Wednesday practice of the season and our last Wednesday practice for our seniors. So that's, I mean, every week nothing's promised anymore. You know, we have to if we want to be back next week, we have to do the job on Saturday, and we know that. Um, so it, it's a different mentality. You know, you don't know which one's going to be your last, so you play every play like it's your last. So I feel like it's not a whole lot that needs to be said. Um, there's not a whole lot of motivating from, from the leaders on the team or from the coaches that go into it. Uh, it really is just like flipping a switch. You know, everybody on the team knows the situation we're in. Uh, everybody, I think, you know, all the fans, everybody knows what's going on. You know, it's a different – and it's a different brand of football. You know, the run game, I feel like, becomes more important. Um, you got to be able to sustain drives and control the clock because at this point, you're not really trying to put up points. You're not trying – you are just trying to win the game. So uh, that is the goal for us. I think everybody knows that. Uh, everybody's working harder. The it, it, it is it is a different energy of football, and that's why we call it a different season because it, it really feels like sometimes the playoff football is a different game. Wyatt, I wanted to go back to uh, kind of the last few weeks because uh, Curtis Jefferson, guy we've talked about before as an offensive lineman, he's uh, kind of found a new role for you guys as an extra blocking tight end fullback. Uh, what has that brought to your offense to have him on the field as kind of a sixth offensive lineman uh, that you can throw in there, throw in the backfield, and, and give you another lead blocker? I believe you guys had a few injuries to tight end and fullback the last few weeks, so that's kind of allowed Curtis a chance to get on the field and uh, you know play a big role for you guys. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's not, uh, I, he's not the first person or the first offensive lineman in the, in the team's history to, to make this switch kind of midseason. Um, there's been some dudes in, in previous years that have done it. Uh, but I think that at least from what I've seen, he, I think he's doing the best job of it. I mean, he is moving around. He is fitting, fitting gaps. And he's doing everything that we need, that the team needs him to do, you know, for us to be successful. And I think that he has had a huge key role in our last performances, especially running the ball. Um, I think it, it makes us. I think it makes us hard to beat in the run game. Uh, and I mean, it's it, it's awesome too. Just to, as a friend, you know, because that dude, he's one of the four guys that I came with, in with on this O line. Uh, in our in our freshman class, so to see him get time on the field and and be able to perform and show what he can do, because I've always said, man, Curtis Jefferson is a great football player, you know, and, and he would go and be able to start in almost probably any he would be able to start in any D two offensive line room. I feel like in the, in this country, you know, he's a talented guy. We we have a lot of talented dudes in our offensive line room. And, it, and it's awesome to see him be able to go out there and perform and show what he can do, uh, and he's doing an amazing job of it. And, again, it just it opens up so much for us offensively and in our run game uh, that it it really, I think, it's it's been a difference maker for us. All right, Wyatt, before we let you go, I have a fun question for you this week since we kind of haven't done that for the past few weeks with you. We've been asking our high school football coaches this week, uh, what their favorite football movie is and why? What is your favorite football movie? Um, I think mine's probably uh, the Longest Yard, but I, I got to give a special shout out to uh, the the movie The Program because that, that's my man uh, Jackson Zadera's favorite one, I and mean, he used to always 
made me watch it on the road trips up and stuff, and it's it's hysterical. So that's a great movie too. Um, but I think personally, mine growing up, I was a huge Longest Yard guy. You know, uh, and I mean the the newer one, not the not the OG version, the one with Adam Sandler. Uh, that's that's I think one of the best football movies ever made. I think it's in a hysterical comedy and just a funny movie. We've been getting a lot of the program, and if I'm being honest, I hadn't heard of this one before. So it's a oldie, it's a oldie, and I'm not surprised that, that if if all the old uh, high school head coaches are throwing that one out there. But yeah, that one is it's a it's there's a <laughs> there's a dude in it, the linebacker. I think it's Alvin Mack. He's just one of the craziest dudes I think I've ever seen. One of the craziest movie characters I've ever seen, especially in a football movie. So it, it's fun to watch. Kyle, we'll have to have a movie. Yeah, we'll have to do that and go watch the program, but appreciate the time, Wyatt. Absolutely, fellas. I appreciate you guys. So hopefully uh, best of luck Saturday, and we'll talk to you next week.